Hi, my name is Teresa Kovlak, and today I am going to show you how to make one of these cute little fairy houses. This one here, it's painted on a stone, and I am using acrylic paints to paint it. And so I'm going to show you how to do this. This is one of my other little rocks, and you can take and sketch out a little drawing of how you would like your house to look and use that as your blueprint. Otherwise on this one I just you know I hate to say it but I just was winging it and painted as I went along. So I'm going to show you how to make these little guys. These are great for your garden and your flower pots. So what you want to do is you want to find yourself um, a nice size stone. This one is a little smaller than my hand. And what I like about it is it has some neat edges to it and it also stands up on its own. So what I'm going to be using today is some acrylic paints. I like these because they're a little bit thicker I find that they cover the stone a little bit better. If you don't have a palette tray to put your paints on, you can just use a paper plate or a plastic plate. So these are some of the colors I'm going to be using. I'll list these in the comment section below. And a couple of other things that I will be using are these markers. These are Pasco markers. These are acrylics, uh, same as this. This is acrylic paint. These are acrylic paint in, um, in a marker form. And what's nice about this is you can use it for doing this little detailing work. So I recommend picking up a couple of these. You can get an off-brand. Um, Michaels does have an off-brand of these. They also work well. And what you're going to do is, let's see here, I'm just going to find a new one. So when you get a new one, you just open it up, give it a little bit of a shake, and press down on it. It has a little bobber to the end here, and what that does is that gets the paint to flow down to the end. And now that marker is ready to go. So I have a, I actually have this set because I use them for other things. Also, you're gonna want a glass container. I find a mason jar works perfect for cleaning your brushes. And you want a couple of brushes um, they don't have to be expensive ones. This one here is actually a little kid's brush and it works just fine. I use this to cover my main, my, um, main coat onto the rock. And then something a little bit smaller uh, for getting into details. And then I also use Sharpies. I like these. Uh, these have the paintbrush tip to it. So as you can see, it has a really nice tip on it. And I do use the little Sharpies for doing some detail work also. So those are nice to have. If you have them around, pull them out. So what I did is I wanted to show you the different stages here. So on this one is your regular rock that needs to be painted. And on this one, I went ahead and put a base coat and you can see it's still a little bit tacky. So I wanted to put a base coat to show you just on how to just take a gob of that paint and put it on. You want to cover the whole surface. It's almost like if you're priming your walls. 
you put a primer on first and then you put your paint on. Well, doing this white is kind of the same way. You're putting a primer on. So there we go, we have a base coat on our rock. And because this is acrylic paints, you can just wipe it right off. Then what we're gonna do, so on this one here, I took my rock, I painted it white, and then I painted it purple, and I started with the roof. Now when I was doing the roof, I originally was doing the blue. I didn't care for it. So I went with this burgundy red, and I like that. And you can see I still have a little bit of that blue showing through. You can see right there, I, I still have a little bit of the blue showing through. And I didn't dry that burgundy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to grab some of my white. And I got a good amount on. And if you ever are driving down the road and you see shingles and they're like two-tone color, that's what I'm going to go for here is two-tone. So I'm just going to take the white and bring it over top. And you can see I'm getting that two-tone look. My little fairies are going to have a nice pretty house. So I still have the burgundy. I still have a little bit of that blue. And I added the white for a little contrast. And I'm bringing my shingles over a little bit. And I think I like that. That looks pretty good. Add a little bit more white right here. And when I'm going into that white, I'm just kind of scooping from the edge. Not that I get the whole white this color of the roof just in case I got to use it for the windows or something else so I think I like that yeah that looks pretty good so I'm going to rinse my brush I'm going to set this aside now what I want to do is I'm going to add my door and some different features on but I'm going to give this a quick little dry it won't dry it all the way but at least a little bit so I can handle it a little bit better There we go. So what I'm going to do is set my rock down, figure out where I want my door, and what side do I want the back and the front. Kind of like how it's sitting here. I think we'll go ahead and put our door right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come in with one of these paint markers. And I'm going to just kind of sketch my door right here. And if your paint's not coming out real good, give it a tap, a little bit of a shake. And voila, we have some paint. I'm going to set my rock down, prop them up a little so you can see them. And 
And if you don't have these paint markers, then go ahead and just use your paint brushes and bring in your paint with your paintbrush. A little door. And we'll do a little window. How about if we do some different type windows? And if you don't like what you paint, paint over top of it and start all over. And if you're not sure of how to get started, draw yourself a little sketch. Make your little sketch and then go from there. It's just all about using your imagination and what you'd like to see. I'm going to give this a little bit of a dry. flower pot maybe a little tree coming out Maybe we'll put some flowers on this little tree. And dry that down a tiny bit. If you go to paint on top of uh, the paint too quickly without drying it, it is going to get the tips of your markers yucky. So you do want to dry it down a tiny bit. This is my Sharpie marker that I'm using. It's that brush tip marker that I was telling you about. This works really nice to come in and just adding a little bit of details. And the Sharpie dries fairly quickly, so this is a metallic that I'm going to go over top of it with. And what I'm just doing is giving it a little bit of accent. Gonna give our little tree some flowers. I think we should do some little, let's see, we'll go with some more little pots at the bottom here.
I'm going to dry those down real quickly. I'm going to go back in and highlight a tiny bit. marker is not cooperating. Let's see. Oh, I have another marker here somewhere. We'll just use the big one. So we're not going to press down real hard at all because we just want to do a little highlight. here too. And we're going to add some flowers to these little guys. And if you think that you have uh, color, extra color on the end of your tip, just take and wipe it off on your uh, on your paper towel. Just putting a little reflection on there. Put a little window in our door. Let's see. These come in so many great colors, they're a lot of fun to use. When I'm dotting these, I'm not really dotting in the center, I'm off center a little so that way the colors are showing through. If you don't like a color you use, pick another one and do it. I just want to do a few more highlights on these little pots. And I like them being different colors, I think they look pretty cool. I'm going to dry this down a little so I can detail that door a little bit more. Alright, so we got the front started. Let's go ahead and do something with the sides and the back. You can see my paper towel was touching there while it was still drying. So I'll just wipe that off. 
and I'm going to hold it now because it is still a little bit wet on the other side so I don't want to touch the paper towel with it. And I think we're going to just do these little vines that are kind of coming up on the back side. If you've ever been on the back of old buildings, a lot of times you'll see ivy growing. And you can see my rock has some texture here. Go ahead and use that texture. Works real well for your painting. But instead of making this all green, I'm gonna put some little flowers in. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry this down. So now that I have that dry, I'm going to add a few little flowers. And I'm just going to dot these in. If you want, you could use your marker and actually draw in little flowers. But just dotting them works really well. And you can even come over with some green little stems if you want but this ivy is going to have some little flowers and we're going to dry it down in just a second here because we'll add another color on top of this Now that we got that dried down, what I'm going to do is go back in with a little bit of color. I tried to do a darker color on the back and a lighter color on the front. And you can see it's not quite dry all the way, so let's dry it rest of the way. Let's go back in and touch up those little flowers. And the gun, the heat gun that I'm using, it's just a um, inexpensive heat gun found in the scrapbooking section and it works just fine. And you can see how using two different colors really makes the little flowers pop. And again, I'm not touching directly in the center. I'm off center so that you're getting both colors. And it's up to you how much detailing you want to spend on your little painting. You can work on it for hours. We're going to go ahead and just put a little bit of accent color in. And you can see I'm not doing it perfect. I'm just sporadically touching on. And it just adds a little bit of color. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that's our back side. We got our front side. And let's go ahead and put something on the side here real quick. I think, let's do, how about if we do a little fence? 
and use a black. Let's see. I thought I have, here it is, my black paint pen. This works really nice. Easy fence. And I'm just drawing lines down and I'm going to bring it over and what this is going to do is act like my shadowing because I'm going to come in with white over top of it. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Your fairies will not mind. Going to give it a quick dry. And we'll go in with the white. You don't have to use white, you can use a different color. Definitely want to wipe that black off my tip of my brush. If I wasn't doing the video, I would let it dry a little bit longer, but I don't want to take up too much of your time here. There we go, nice little fence. And we could even put a vine crawling up the fence, so let me dry it down a tiny bit. Come in with a little bit of green. Maybe like if it had a rose bush climbing up. And we'll go with some hot pink on this one. And we'll accent it. How about with a little blue? Let's dry it down a tiny bit. going to use this bigger tip so this has a smaller tip on it where this one is the same color with a bigger tip it is nice having the two options give my paint a shake and go ahead and put it on and you can see I got a little bit of a gob there don't worry about that you can either let it dry the way it is or you can come in with a paper towel and just touch a little bit out and go back in and tap it one more time and let that dry a little bit Come in with one more color. It's more of a yellow. I'm kind of tapping it twice, three times, just to give it a little more accent color in there. And it's up to you. If you just want pink flowers, just do pink. Dry that down a tiny bit more.
This here is kind of a salmon color. So we got the front, we got the side, we got the back, and we got one more side to do. And on my other painting, I don't know if you noticed, but I put a bunny on there. He's right there. So I'll show you how to do that bunny. He's fairly easy to do. I think this is the color I use, so we'll go ahead and use that. Don't worry about your rock being misshapen. Your bunny does not have to be perfect. I do his little head. Bring his ears up. And because my rock has the grooves there, I'm just going to color that in because that's going to be our bunny. There. I'm just going to color that in because that's going to be our bunny. And then we need to put a body on him. So we're going to make him kind of a pudgy bunny. And we're going to do some legs on him. Like he's sitting there watching the house. We're going to dry this down a tiny bit. And we're going to give our bunny a white tail. And then we're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to come in and we're going to highlight them. That looks pretty good. And we'll give our bunny a little bit of grass. And I'm going to use two different colors. That way we have a little highlight. Wipe off our marker in case we got some of the other paint on. I'm going to give it a quick dry. Now on the front here, if I want to add a little more detailing, I can. Maybe if I want to put a little grass coming across. I think we'll do that real quick, like set him down, prop him up a little tiny bit so you can see. A little bit of that grass is going to hit the pots because the pots are sitting in the grass. And a little bit of light green with it. And just add some accent colors.
I'm just fixing my door here at the bottom so it has a little bit of so it looks like the bottom of the door not that it's just the bottom of the rock I like that a little bit better so there you have it these are the two that we did the other day I didn't make a video on these two but I hope this video helps you paint a fairy house for your garden. So you can see the sides. On this one, we just have it plain with a little kitty right there. See the kitty? On this one, we put a bunny with a little vine on the back. A little fence on the side. Three little fairy houses. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. Again, my name is Teresa Koblak and happy painting.